Welcome to Stock Market Briefing. The content of the briefing includes. China is fast losing its place as must-have in global portfolios. U.S. regulator SEC authorizes Bitcoin spot ETFs in cryptocurrency breakthrough. Your evening briefing, good news on inflation may be on the way. Hong Kong stocks halt slump as mainland funds lift market from 14-month low. China's quants suffer from cuts to automated commodity trading refunds. China is fast losing its place as must-have in global portfolios. Bloomberg. Several major U.S. pension funds have reduced their exposure to Chinese stocks as a result of concerns about Beijing's long-term economic agenda, a prolonged property crisis, and strategic competition with the U.S. The California Public Employees Retirement System and New York State Common Retirement Fund, two of the country's largest pension investors, have cut their holdings for a third consecutive year. Many money managers are adopting a cautious approach to investing in China, and some funds have even exited completely. A survey of 100 pension and sovereign wealth managers by London-based think tank official monetary and financial institutions forum found that none of them had a positive outlook on China or expected higher relative returns. China's share of the MSCI Emerging Markets Index has fallen to its lowest level since mainland stocks were added to the gauge in 2018, and its weight in the Asia-Pacific Index has dropped from 24% in 2020 to around 15%. U.S. regulator SEC authorizes Bitcoin spot ETFs in cryptocurrency breakthrough. South China Morning Post. U.S. regulators have given their approval for the launch of exchange-traded funds, ETFs, that invest directly in Bitcoin. The move is being seen as a significant moment for the $1.7 trillion digital asset sector, as it will boost access to the largest cryptocurrency on Wall Street and beyond. The Securities and Exchange Commission has authorized funds for BlackRock, Invesco, Fidelity and smaller competitors including Valkyrie. It follows a long period of opposition by the SEC, which dates back to 2013 when Tyler and Cameron Winklevoss first proposed a Bitcoin ETF. Your evening briefing, good news on inflation may be on the way. Bloomberg. U.S. inflation is expected to continue slowing throughout the rest of the year, potentially reaching the Federal Reserve's 2% target by the end of 2024. This is good news for the Fed's goal of a soft landing and for President Joe Biden as he begins his re-election campaign. However, some forecasters warn that lower inflation could lead to a broader economic slowdown, which would be less favorable for the Democrats. Meanwhile, U.S. regulators have formally approved exchange-traded funds that invest directly in Bitcoin, with 11 funds authorized to begin trading. Hong Kong stocks halt slump as mainland funds lift market from 14-month low. South China Morning Post. Hong Kong stocks rose on Thursday, ending a seven-day slide, as mainland Chinese fund managers increased their purchases. The Hang Seng Index gained 1.4% to 16,320.00, while the Tech Index jumped 1.7%. The Shanghai Composite Index was little changed near its lowest level since May 2020. The rally was driven by bullish trades in U.S. and Asian equities, with sentiment improving. China's quants suffer from cuts to automated commodity trading refunds. South China Morning Post. Chinese commodities exchanges are ending the refunds paid on some automated trades, as the authorities seek to reduce volatility in markets that help set the prices that the country pays for raw materials. Two of the nation's four main bourses, the Dalian Commodity Exchange and the Zhengzhou Commodity Exchange, will no longer give refunds this year to brokers on some of the program trades executed by their customers. The rulings will affect so-called quant strategies generated by computer algorithms that involve the rapid buying and selling of securities. SEC approves first spot Bitcoin ETFs in boost to crypto advocates. Financial Times. The U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission, SEC, has approved the first spot Bitcoin exchange-traded funds, ETFs, paving the way for the launch of 10 ETFs, including offerings from established players such as Fidelity and Invesco as well as digital-focused newcomers like Grayscale and ARK Invest. The ETFs, which will hold assets like mutual funds but trade on exchanges like stocks, are expected to begin trading on Thursday. The SEC's decision marks a turning point for the cryptocurrency market, as it will allow U.S. retail and institutional investors to gain direct exposure to Bitcoin through a regulated product without the risks associated with unregulated exchanges. The SEC had previously resisted approving spot Bitcoin ETFs, citing concerns about fraud and manipulation. However, Grayscale successfully challenged the regulator's rejection of an earlier spot Bitcoin application, and a federal appeals court ruled in August that the decision was arbitrary and capricious, putting pressure on the SEC to change its stance. Japan's Nikkei average hovers above 35,000 mark, 
highest since 1990. Nikkei Asia. The Nikkei stock average in the Tokyo Stock Exchange rose for a fourth consecutive day, reaching its highest level since February 1990. The increase was attributed to the weak yen and gains in high-tech stocks in the U.S. stock market. Semiconductor shares and high-dividend stocks were preferred, and the newly overhauled Nippon Individual Savings Account Program was believed to be attracting fund inflows from retail investors. Export-related stocks were also supported by the weakening currency against the dollar. The rise in U.S. tech stocks led to increased purchases of semiconductors, and companies such as Hitachi, Sony, and Toyota saw significant gains. But Standard Chartered Banker bullish on outlook for yuan assets as stars align. South China Morning Post. Standard Chartered Bank predicts that anticipated U.S. interest rate cuts, Hong Kong's measures to attract family offices, and the upcoming investment migration scheme will attract investors to yuan-denominated assets this year. The bank believes that the Federal Reserve will start cutting rates in the second half of the year, diminishing the appeal of U.S. dollar assets and drawing funds back to Asia. Standard Chartered expects the rate cut to support the yuan, which is predicted to appreciate by about 2% to 7 yuan per dollar this year. World trying to quit fossil fuels gets flood of gas instead. Bloomberg. The energy sector is investing billions of dollars in natural gas projects, betting that it will remain a key part of the global energy mix until at least 2050. The lifespan of natural gas is dependent on investment in the terminals that liquefy and export liquefied natural gas, LNG, allowing countries that are not ready for renewables to transition away from fossil fuels. Over 200 million tons of new natural gas export capacity is set to come online in the next five years, with a potential 70% increase in capacity by 2030. This would add enough annual gas capacity to power 500 million homes and ensure the relevance of natural gas and its emissions for decades to come. Nasdaq invests in fighting financial crime using AI technology. Bloomberg. Nasdaq has stated that its anti-financial crime division is the company's fastest-growing segment, rising by approximately 20% YOY. The company is working with banks, exchanges, and brokerages to help eliminate financial crime threats. Nasdaq is using artificial intelligence to enhance its anti-crime offerings, enabling the prediction and acceleration of the identification of criminal behavior. Nasdaq CEO Adina Friedman also stated that the recent approval of spot Bitcoin ETFs by the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission would offer more accessibility to the asset class. Fund manager who beat 97% of peers sees bottom in China property. Bloomberg. Global fund manager Loomis Sales is increasingly positive about China's real estate sector, arguing that recent restructuring is paying off and that improved sentiment could lead to a faster-than-expected recovery. Fellow asset manager Fidelity International agrees, highlighting the potential profits that can be made from investing in the surviving developers of a housing downturn. Loomis Sales has been buying bonds of distressed developer Sunak China Holdings, while Fidelity has added a small position in China state-owned developer shares. The stocks and bonds of Chinese real estate companies have been hit hard over the past four years. Has Team Transitory really won America's inflation debate? Economist. The debate over whether the recent slowdown in inflation is due to monetary policy tightening or the resolution of supply chain issues is ongoing. The Federal Reserve and other major central banks have acted as if inflation was persistent and raised interest rates, leading to a slowdown in inflation. However, proponents of the transitory view argue that inflation has slowed because supply chains have become less snarled. They point to evidence that increased production and declining prices have contributed to disinflation. On the other hand, those who believe inflation is persistent argue that the tightening of monetary policy has played a significant role in curbing inflation. They argue that without the Fed's actions, inflation would have been even higher. A more elaborate Phillips curve that includes factors beyond just the labor market suggests that monetary tightening accounted for about 20% of the disinflation, while anchored inflation expectations and the healing of supply chains accounted for the rest. Ultimately, the debate comes down to policy prescriptions, and in that regard, Team Transitory has lost, as the Fed's response to inflation has been more aggressive than originally projected. The First Oil Crisis, Haruhiko Kuroda, 9. Nikkei Asia. Haruhiko Kuroda, former governor of the Bank of Japan, has written an article for Nikkei Asian Review reflecting on his time at the International Finance Bureau in 1973. In the wake of the first oil crisis, Kuroda was responsible for controlling capital outflows from Japan and encouraging inflows of funds. Kuroda recalls his role in the creation of the oil facility, a loan program for oil importing countries to help combat the effects of rising oil prices. The program was opposed by the US, and Japan instead borrowed $3 billion from Saudi Arabia.
PBOC provides strongest boost to yuan via fixing since November. Bloomberg. China's central bank has set its daily reference rate for the yuan at the widest gap to estimate since November, in an effort to push back against yuan weakness. The People's Bank of China, PBOC, set the fixing at 7.1087 per dollar, 609 pips stronger than the average estimate in a Bloomberg survey. The PBOC has been supporting the yuan through its daily fixings over the last seven months, as the wide interest rate gap between the US and China favors the dollar, weighing on the local currency. Genome sequencing to yield new cancer treatments, UK study finds. Financial Times. Cancer patients could benefit from the expansion of genome sequencing of tumors, according to the world's largest study of the technique. The study, conducted in England, found that some common cancers have a genetic profile that could guide decisions about patient surgery and drug therapy. Genome sequencing is able to read all 3.2 billion letters of genetic code in DNA, compared to the more limited panel of genetic tests currently used. NHS England declined to comment on how much it plans to spend on expanding cancer genomics. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Six here, your resident observer from the sixth dimension, bringing you the latest news from around the world. Let's dive in. First up, we have news that several major U.S. pension funds are reducing their exposure to Chinese stocks due to concerns about Beijing's economic agenda and the ongoing property crisis. It seems that China is losing its appeal as a must-have in global portfolios. But hey, don't worry, China still has plenty of other things going for it, like delicious dumplings and Jackie Chan movies. In other news, the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission, SEC, has authorized the launch of exchange-traded funds, ETFs, that invest directly in Bitcoin. This is a big breakthrough for the cryptocurrency world, as it will make it easier for investors to get access to Bitcoin on Wall Street. I guess you could say that Bitcoin is finally going mainstream, just like that catchy song you can't get out of your head. Speaking of good news, U.S. inflation is expected to continue slowing throughout the rest of the year, potentially reaching the Federal Reserve's 2% target by the end of 2024. This is great news for President Joe Biden as he begins his re-election campaign. But hey, let's not get too excited, because lower inflation could also mean a broader economic slowdown, which might not be so favorable for the Democrats. It's like a roller coaster ride, folks, with twists and turns at every corner. Moving on to Hong Kong, stocks rose after a seven-day slump, thanks to mainland Chinese fund managers increasing their purchases. It seems that they're swooping in to save the day and lift the market from its 14-month low. I guess you could say they're the heroes that Hong Kong needs right now. Cue the dramatic music. In China, commodities exchanges are ending refunds on some automated trades to reduce market volatility. This will affect computer-generated quant strategies that involve rapid buying and selling of securities. So, if you're a quant trader in China, it's time to find a new gig. May I suggest becoming a TikTok star? It seems to be all the rage these days. And in the world of energy, the natural gas sector is investing billions of dollars in new projects, betting that it will remain a key part of the global energy mix for decades to come. It's like putting all your chips on black, hoping for a big win. But hey, who am I to judge? I once bet all my savings on a game of rock-paper-scissors. Let's just say I'm still paying off that debt. Finally, the Bank of Japan's former governor, Haruhiko Kuroda, has written an article reflecting on his time during the first oil crisis in 1973. It's a blast from the past, folks. Kuroda recalls his role in creating a loan program for oil importing countries to combat rising oil prices. It's like a history lesson mixed with a financial thriller. Who knew oil could be so exciting? That's all the news for today, folks. Remember, these are just my observations from the sixth dimension, so take them with a grain of salt. Now, it's your turn to join the conversation. What do you think about the US pension funds reducing their exposure to Chinese stocks? Are you excited about the launch of Bitcoin ETFs? Share your thoughts and let's get the discussion going. Until next time, this is Dr. Six signing off, and thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the Six Do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of six do brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the six do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity.
To customize 6do Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6dobrief.com. Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6do Brief via email.